lecture, we are going to have an overview of the role and of the typologies of inventories in a logistics system. In general, inventories can be classified on the basis of the inventory role, the typology of stored goods, and the phase of the production or logistics system. Let's start to consider the role of inventories. Inventories can be used to improve efficiency, that is, to reduce costs, and or to improve effectiveness, in order to better satisfy the customer needs. As for efficiency, the inventories can allow the reduction of other production or logistics costs, like for example purchasing, production or transport costs, thus minimizing the total costs. Let's see some examples. First, seasonal inventories. For instance, they can be used when the market demand has strong seasonality, but we want to level the production in order to reduce production costs. In this case, we can start the production before the demand peaks, in order to accumulate stocks that will allow to keep the production rate quite stable, thus reducing the need to use over time or temporary work. The trade-off to be considered is between the production costs and the inventory carrying costs. Seasonal inventories can be used also when production is seasonal and market demand is stable. For example, this is the case of several food products like tomato sauce. A second example is that of the so-called opportunistic inventories. They allow to buy large lots of goods at low prices. This is the case, for example, of promotions or volume discounts. The trade-off to be considered in this case is between the purchasing costs, which are expected to decrease, and the inventory carrying costs, which are instead expected to increase, since the average stocks will be higher. Another example is given by transport-related inventories. If we consider road transport, full truckload shipments are more convenient since they allow to split the fixed cost of the transport on a higher number of units. The same can be said when we consider more economic transport modes like water or rail, which usually require higher quantities to be shipped. However, larger quantities lead to higher inventories. Therefore, the trade-off is between the transport costs, which are expected to decrease, and the inventory carrying costs. A similar trade-off can be considered between subsequent production phases. In this case, we talk about interoperational inventories. This is the case, for example, of the production of the components and the subsequent assembly phase, which rely on the stocks of all the components. The trade-off is between the production costs, which are expected to decrease with large production batches, and inventory carrying costs, which are instead expected to increase, since large batches lead to higher levels of inventories. We have said at the very beginning of the lecture that inventories can be also a level of effectiveness. For example, this is the case of the inventories related to uncertainty, which are intended to face variation in the demand and in the supply. The basic idea is to keep stocks in order to reduce the probability of incurring in stockouts if unexpected events happen. For example, the customer demand is higher than expected and or the replenishment lead time is longer than expected. Therefore, the trade-off is between the costs of stockouts and inventory carrying costs. A different example is that of the inventories related to product quality. This is the case of some types of food, like cheese, ham or wine, that require to be stocked for a certain amount of time in order to improve their quality. This is also the case of products that need a quarantine before being sold, like pharmaceutical products. The trade-off is between the inventory carrying costs and the value deriving from the increased quality. Up to now, we have classified inventories on the basis of their main role, that is efficiency or effectiveness. But there are other useful classifications that can be used. A second classification is based on the typology of stored goods. We distinguish among direct raw materials that are used to make the product, packing materials 
like cardboard, bottles, etc. Subsidiary materials like oil for production machines and spare parts. Another classification refers to the phase of the production or logistics system. If we refer to production, we can distinguish among uh, raw materials like steel, plastic and so on, components like screws, bolts and so on, sub-assemblies like a car engine and a finished products like cars. If we consider the logistics system, inventories may be in a warehouse or in another node of the system, for example, the warehouse of the production plant, a warehouse of the distribution network, a store, or they can be in transit, for example, on a truck. With regard to the inventories in a warehouse, it is very important to distinguish among cycle stocks and safety stocks since they have different roles that should be considered when we size the inventories in a warehouse. Please pay attention to the fact that this is a logical classification based on the function of the inventories, but the goods in a warehouse cannot be physically distinguished. Cycle stocks are a level of efficiency and the result from different operative rhythm of two consecutive stages in the supply chain. Therefore, their sizing is a trade-off between logistics costs. In the picture, we can see the expected path of the cycle stocks in our house under the assumption of constant customer demand and a replenishment policy with fixed order quantities equal to Q. The average cycle stocks are therefore equal to half the order quantity. Of course, the order quantity and the time interval between two orders are related. Safety stocks are a level of effectiveness and they are used to face the uncertainty of both the demand and the replenishment lead time. In fact, safety stocks are used when the demand is higher than the forecast or the replenishment lead time is longer than expected or both. Therefore, the sizing of the safety stocks is a trade-off between the service level and the inventory carrying costs. In this lecture, we have analyzed the roles of the inventories and we have seen different ways to classify them. In the next lectures, we will analyze the inventory planning process and the main management models that can be used.